I had a friend in high school named Kim who loved to fish. Scratch that, Kim was obsessed with fishing. He seemed happiest when he was in a boat on a lake dangling his fishing line in the water for hours and hours. Now, because I was such a good friend, I went fishing with Kim a few times, where it became abundantly clear to me that I did not love fishing. Kim had a passion and dedication that I clearly lacked. As I think back on my friend Kim and his love of fishing, it occurs to me that to be successful at anything in life, whether it's school or a career, a relationship, sports, or the arts, you need passion and dedication. You can't give up with the first setback or failure. You have to stick with it, even when times get tough. And if you do, you'll discover what you're good at and maybe discover your purpose in life. This is week three of our message series titled Life Interrupted. In the readings this month, we're meeting individuals who had a moment when God interrupted their lives in a big way. In today's gospel, Jesus called four men to be his followers, and they responded in a big way. So every time I hear a Bible story about fishing or fishermen, I can't help but think of my high school friend. For Kim, fishing was a hobby, just a relaxing way to spend a morning or afternoon. But in Jesus' day, fishing was a profession, and it was hard, back-breaking work that was most often done at night. The reason they fished at night was because the fish couldn't see their nets in the dark. And then after a full night on the water, the fishermen's work wasn't over. They had to sort their catch, get it to the market, and then repair their nets for the next night of work. To be a successful fisherman on the Sea of Galilee required those qualities I talked about, passion and dedication. Without those, a fisherman would fail. Well, Jesus must have seen those qualities and more the day he walked along the seashore and called his first disciples. Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. They abandoned their nets and followed him. Just sit with that line for a moment. Lifelong fishermen whose own livelihood and that of their families depended on fishing, one day just abandoned it all and went in a different direction. It's a little hard to wrap your head around. Why did they do what they did that day? Were they unhappy, bored, stuck in a rut, frustrated? We aren't told any of those things in the reading. It must have been something about Jesus or his call that captivated them, intrigued them. You know, from the way the story is written, it seems like this encounter was random. Like a stranger showed up one day, said, follow me, and they followed. But it's likely they'd heard some things about Jesus before that day. They might have heard him preach or heard about his miracles. So when he called them, it sounded intriguing and compelling. And like with other individuals we've met in this series, the Magi, Samuel, the disciples of John the Baptist, when God interrupted their lives in a big way, they said yes. <laughs> Throughout this message series, I've offered you some signs that can help you figure out when God is interrupting your life and what it means. Week one with the Magi, the sign is God asking us to go someplace new. Last week with the story of Samuel and Eli, we said that God will send wise counselors to help us figure out when he's calling us. Here's another sign that we see from today's call of the fishermen stepping outside your comfort zone. 
when God interrupts our lives, he often asks us to take a step outside our comfort zone, to try something new or challenging or even a little scary. And this is what Jesus was doing with the fishermen in today's gospel, asking them to believe that if they took that step, if they trusted him, it would make all the difference, not just for them, but for others too. Which leads to another sign that God is interrupting our lives. It blesses others. What God asks us to do will be a source of blessing to others. <clears throat> the fishermen who decided to follow Jesus that day became apostles. They would spend the rest of their lives leading others to Jesus and building his kingdom. They would preach and teach and heal just as he did. Things every disciple is called to do, including you and me. Well, what might that look like for us to step outside our comfort zone so we can bless others? This coming Friday, I'll be traveling to Honduras with a group of parishioners for a week-long mission trip. I'd like to share a little background on how this came about. Ten years ago, a pastor of St. Paul's Catholic Church in Damascus, Maryland, asked me if St. Pius would consider partnering with them in support of a medical mission clinic they established in Honduras 25 years ago. And he explained that it would involve having volunteers, doctors, nurses, dentists, and regular folks spend a week caring for some of the poorest of the poor in our hemisphere. He also asked me to consider going on the next trip. I have to be honest. I didn't drop everything and go. I didn't say I'm all in. Not at first. But after numerous conversations with the Honduras coordinator, Cherie Wade, I said yes. And I'm so glad I did. This will be my fourth mission trip to Honduras. And I know that like the previous ones, I will get so much more out of it than I could possibly give. God will use us to bless others. And it's not just those of us physically traveling to Honduras. It's all of you who donated to our mission fund that make it possible. It's all of you who brought in medical supplies that we will distribute while we're there. And it's everyone who will pray for the success of our mission. So what might God be asking you to do? Maybe there's a mission trip in your future. Maybe God is nudging you to take a step into one of our numerous ministries. It could be a new opportunity God is offering you at work or a big family decision you've been putting off. Maybe it's pursuing a dream you've had but never got started on or an idea that keeps popping into your head again and again. Consider taking that step this year outside of your comfort zone. Allow God to use you to bless others. In my experience, the biggest thing holding us back from taking a step is fear. Fear of failure. We worry that we aren't up to it. But with every individual we've met throughout this series, here's what we know. God doesn't call us to something we won't be good at. Jesus knew the fishermen could become fishers of men. God won't ever ask you to do something you can't do. He will never set you up to fail. So ultimately, it comes down to trust. Trusting in God and trusting in yourself and your abilities. As we continue into this new year, ask the Lord to help you respond to his call when your life is interrupted. Amen.